Hi guys, Hector here with a couple of quick tips on P12S Phase 1 in case you're still working your way through this fight. First up is what I've heard referred to as the JP Lazy Lasers version of Para 1. You might be familiar with the original Lazy Lasers version of Para 1. This has both of their tanks popping in Vuln before the first lasers go off so they can eat all of the lasers and nobody else has to do any of the mechanic. This is a very slight amendment to that. It only takes one additional player. In this case, M1, they stand perfectly middle for the first laser. Off tank goes slightly into the hitbox, and main tank goes max melee outside. You deal with Trinity Souls exactly the same way as you normally would, so in this case it's a late dodge. Off tank hits their invuln at the usual time before the first lasers, but main tank doesn't. Instead, main tank's only going to take one laser because M1 is taking one of the other ones. From this point onwards, main tank can hit their invuln at any point in time before the second lasers go off, and that invuln is still going to last for the auto attack afterwards. Thus, if you're used to the usual pattern where you have to hyper-mitigate the auto, you don't have to mitigate it at all here, you just need to make sure that you heal up your main tank slightly after the initial auto. Another thing that I found useful, a bunch of commenters have suggested a way to use the images of the debuffs during Super Chain 1 to be able to easier or figure out whether or not you need to go left or right. You should be familiar with the basics of light goes left, red goes right, lasers opposite, but did you know that the debuff images actually hint which way to go? The light debuff has both the person and the tower on the left side of the debuff, while the red debuff has the person and the tower on the right side of the debuff. The only ones where that doesn't work is the lasers, but they hint where to go in their own way. If you imagine the boss is at the top of the debuff, shooting the laser down at you at the bottom, you're standing on the side of the debuff that's getting hit. Think of it like this, and you'll be able to remember that the red laser goes to the left and the light laser goes to the right. Lastly, during my initial explanation of limit cut, I skipped over a couple of things relating to the ads that are really helpful. When the adds initially come down, they have a rune with them. The ones on Cardinals have a purple rune, the ones on Intercardinals have a yellowy orange rune, and this is hinting at what attack they're going to do later on. The purple adds are going to do the point blank AoE, and the yellowy orange adds are going to do lasers. After the boss does its ultimate attack and you get the octagonal arena, the adds are going to fly away, and the order that they fly away in is actually telling you the order of their mechanics. If you pay attention very carefully, anytime a cardinal ad flies away, that's an AoE. Anytime an intercardinal flies away, that's laser. So, for instance, in this pattern, it's AoE, AoE, laser, laser, AoE, laser, laser, AoE. Now, if that felt really fast and you struggled to make sense of it, I'll be honest, I have never found it useful to pay attention to the ads as they're flying away. I can't remember it in the midst of all of the stuff with the numbers and the limit cut. But there are two ways you can take advantage of this. First, the first four adds are always going to include two point blank OEs and two sets of lasers. The same is true for the second four adds, two point blank AOEs and two lasers. In fact, the second four adds are always going to be the exact inverse of what the first set are. These can be mixed up in a number of different orders. Some of these really nice, like this one, laser out, laser out. And some of them are horrible, like this one that will have four consecutive lasers. But there's two ways that you can take advantage of this information to make the whole mechanic a little bit simpler. You still do the usual. As soon as you see a laser get hit, if you're the next laser bait, you move in, but with a couple of twists. First off, when the ads fall down, they come with a rune. If you see a purple rune, you know it's going to be a point blank AoE. If instead you see an orange yellow rune come down, you know it's about to be lasers. Now, this pattern here that we just saw, we had point blank AoE, point blank AoE is the first two. You now, whenever you see that, know that the next two are going to be lasers. In fact, this is the curse pattern, and the next four are going to be lasers. This You can't preposition, but you can mentally prepare yourself to know as soon as I get hit by the laser, I need to go wall, and as soon as I see the lasers go off, I need to move in. Seven and five and six and eight here can know that immediately they're going to have to go back to the wall. Same thing with one and three, knowing that it's definitely going to be consecutive lasers and they need to be fast. Here's another pattern where you can take advantage of it. If instead the first ad comes down and shoots lasers, the second ad comes down and shoots lasers, one and three might be tempted to go, oh, it's my turn to get in. They don't need to work. Since the first two are lasers, you know that the next four are actually all going to be point-blank AoEs, and so they can wait, do their limit cut, and take their time getting in, as the lasers aren't going to go off for a very long time. Anyways, these are all things that I found a little bit useful to help me with my prog. I hope you find them useful too. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other tips or any things that I've missed out on. Thanks so much, guys. Take care.